we're going to demonstrate integrating live time with multi-GP. One of the first steps we want to do is make sure that our multi-GP event has a single round. I'll explain why that is later. It just works better with a uh, single round. So what you do is you go to uh, Update Invo, change the rounds. Remember, I had originally set this race up for 10 rounds. I'm going to set to one round. Save that. Then you need to regenerate the race schedule. Go to Settings for the race schedule and Regenerate Race Schedule. Now when we look at the rounds, click the load schedule, you'll see there's only a single round. Our next step is to go to Live Time and set up the integration with Multi-GP. So under Live Time in the upper right, there's Live Race Media. Click on that. Go to the Partners tab. Enable Multi-GP. On the Sign-In tab, you'll sign in with your Multi-GP credentials. We can leave the Sync options and Import options as defaults. Now let's import the event uh, into LiveTime. What we do is you go to the Events tab, and if there's already an event here, you go to Change, because we want to get a new event. You'll now see the From Multi-GP uh, marker button. The easiest way to search is by ID, and to see the ID of your race, if you go to Multi-GP, we have the race ID right here. It's also in the URL, so 23369. So if we search for 23369, we see Raleigh Rotor Racers. I have my pilots, frequencies, races. And under races, we'll go ahead and select to import rounds so we can get that uh, first round of racers in. import event and we have now successfully imported the event next we'll go and update the event settings for this event and there's two places where we do that the first place is the edit button for that event so you go to edit and here you say the type in my example I'm gonna do qualify to main because I'm gonna do Fastest three consecutive lap qualifying going to bracket main events. That's my goal here. Uh, for the qualifying result, I'll select fastest three consecutive. Um, I know I'm going to be doing bracket mains, so I want, but I'm going to do double elimination with Chase the Ace. Uh, we'll go through double elimination in a second, so but we do want to say Chase the Ace for the final result. Uh, if you want to use points, there's a section to set up points uh, for a you know, different styles of racing, but we'll go through that in a minute. On uh, this panel, you have to make sure you hit the save button when you're in that edit. Most other places in live time, uh, it, the changes are instant. The other event settings are these four tabs, timing, rounds, and audio. So if you go to timing, a bunch of settings here that you want to change from the defaults. Uh, the first one, ignore valid and minimum lap time, uh, you want that to be ignore valid uh, and minimum lap time set to about 10 is a, usually a good value to start with. Depending on the size of your course, you could actually increase that. We won't use caution period, so these checks don't matter. Uh, we Broken detection, we don't utilize in drone racing. Auto completion, we do keep enabled for the auto status, disable those. And it just makes things much cleaner. So that's for timing. Under rounds, if you're going to do like a fastest three consecutive lap, you know, qualifying type, you'll do stagger start. Everyone does not have to launch it once. Uh, it's going to be a timed race at two minutes. So I have it set for two minute countdown. Uh, I am going to sort the settings based on top three consecutive because that's the, the format that I'm using for qualifying. For main events, you go to the main event tab and I'll be doing heads up starts. We usually do uh, first to finish like three laps. Uh, this fourth final lap after leader finishes, that's also called the NASCAR rule. If When the leader 
finishes a race, everyone who crosses the checkered line after the leader, the leader has finished, uh, their race is now complete as well. I want to do the sort settings per the top three consecutive. And I had mentioned before, I want, I want to do bracket mains in my case. And I have very few pilots in the sample race. So I'm only going to do uh, two initial races of four pilots each. So those are the settings uh, for the men. We generally don't use practice and seating uh, when we're doing using live time. Uh, for audio, the recommended settings that I like are I don't like any pre-tones. I don't want the countdown, five, four, three, two, one, then go, or beep, 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 go. We do it championship style. When we press the button to say start, the tone sounds, pilots launch. That avoids false starts by pilots trying to anticipate when the start tone is going to be. Next, let's go to the pilot tab. Under pilot, click on the trophy. And that'll sort uh, by all the people that are in your event. And any pilot that we use that we want to integrate with live with multi-GPs racing, you have to make sure has the little checker flag symbol, the multi-GP symbol to the left. If it does not have that symbol, it will not properly sync with multi-GP because it does not have the pilot ID. So I've had a few more pilots enter uh, but I've not resynced those pilots. If you go to events and you say pool pilots, that will get the additional pilots. Let's go to race schedule. In the race schedule, we can see I have, you know, five, the original five pilots there, but not my new pilots that have been recently pooled. If we click on the pilots tab, here they are off to the left. Now that I've gotten I'm up to about eight pilots now. I'm going to need to add heats to the schedule. So we go to the setup tab, add race, and that will add a new race. Go to the pilot tab, and I can now drag pilots over to that race. I'm going to go ahead and even up the, the heats a little bit so it's not five and two. We'll go ahead and uh, even that up that way. The numbers don't matter much. I always just hit the renumber them so they renumber. So that's how you can modify uh, the number of heats. It doesn't matter that you don't have these heats defined in Racing. When the system is updating the scores, it will automatically generate the heats to represent what you're doing here in live time. Next, let's get ready to race. First, we'll make sure the immersion system has been hooked up before our first race. So there's the immersion RC lap RF. You click on the decoder up in the upper left corner. That should show green. It shows red for me because I don't actually have the immersion hooked up. But you would say the immersion RC lap RF and your IP address. Under settings, when the immersion is hooked up, you'll want to sync event video frequencies. Do that before your first race and it'll uh, send the channel set to the immersion RC lap RF. Next, we're going to go to race. You select which race you want to run and you do start race. A popular option that pilots will want to see is the estimated position. Uh, and this is sorted by the sort type. We said faster three consecutive laps. So as your event goes on, this estimated position will always update. That's in the lower right. When your race is complete, you can, you can press finish race. Uh, if there are laps that aren't right, you can remove you know, a lap uh, if somebody has mistakenly crossed over the start line while they were part of the, on the wrong part of the course or something like that. So I'm going to say finish race. And as a result of finished race, that data gets automatically pushed up to a multi-GP. So if we go to the multi-GP website and refresh, we will now see 
that we have best round uh, finish times listed. And so this will constantly update as the live time race is progressing. You can also load schedule and see the heats as they progress. So after you've completed all the races for a round, we want to create the next round. And this is why you don't create rounds ahead of time, because if I had created 10 rounds and modified pilot's positions, I would have had to go and drag those pilot position changes for all future rounds. So that's why we tend to start with the single round to start with and then do create next round at the when you're done with all heats for a round. So to create the next round, uh, we'll say it's a, another qualifying round and duplicate everything. So we just want to duplicate last round, same order, keep drone numbers the same, keep frequencies the same. And so that's how you generate rounds and that, that created a Q2 round. And we can go through racing and do Q2 racing for the, uh, for the second round. When I've completed qualifying, I now want to create the bracket rounds, the bracket main events. I'm going to go back to events and make sure that under my rounds main that I'm set up for double elimination. I remember that I was not I was set for single, so I'm going to set, I want to do a double elimination bracket for eight pilots. So two initial races, four pilots each. We're going to go to schedule and create next round. And now I'm going to say main round. The seating is based on the top three consecutive, and there are the seated pilots. The reds means that those pilots didn't get a top three consecutive uh, in my sample racing, but it'll seed them nonetheless. And I'll say generate. So now it has created the bracket. So for uh, a eight person bracket, it's only six total races. You can click on the view main races shows the race order. If you want to see what that looks like in brackets, you know, here's what the brackets look like. And those brackets will fill out as the race progresses on. So now you run these races. So you go to racing and now we're in the M round, the main round rather than Q. And you just uh, run your bracket races and follow the instructions for bumping up pilots to the next rounds. Okay. When the bracket race is complete, you say finish race. It will have which pilots bump up to the winner's bracket and which pilots go to the loser's bracket. So you'll say finish bumps. It will describe the pilot movement. And you're off to the, the next race. So if you go to schedule, which you don't have to go to schedule, you could just keep going. But if you go to schedule, races, brackets, we can now see that Focus and Baymax went to race four and Lipo Fire and Scory went down to race uh, three. When bracket racing is complete, we next want to push these results to multi-GP. What you do is you go to events, timing results, and say report final results to multi-GP. This will override the top three consecutive results and instead push the overall results as calculated by live time as a result of the brackets. And refresh that schedule. We'll see now that what used to be top three consecutive times are now showing point totals for overall results. If you do update scores, you can also see the overall results there as well. The only step remaining is that MultiGP's race sync is to do the finalized race to send the emails and close the race out. Uh, there's also these live FPV links throughout the schedule and the event. And these live FPV links have more data about the race that has taken place that's available on the live FPV site. So if you really want to see details and, and statistics, we encourage you to, to reference those sites uh, at live time, at live FPV.